How does that Bible verse go? The higher the hair, the bigger the slur. Hi, ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Pat or Rat. And today we are reviewing episode eight of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season three. Our queens were challenged to overact in Bra Wars, The Vampire Strikes Back, and the runway category was Scene Stealers, looks based on iconic cinematic characters. And we've finally got a top four. So we'll be taking a look back at how our queens did throughout the season and ranking their performance in today's episode overall from rottest rat to hottest hats. And we've got a lot to talk about today, but first, my champions need me. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Use my QR code or click the link in the description of my video to start downloading Raid right now. And while you're downloading, I've got a question for you. Do you like elves? Of course you do, right? Well, here's some tea for you. Better than regular elves are dark elves. They're a legion of evil assassins and warlocks. Just check out Madame Ceres, for example. Not only is she hot, but a super powerful support character. Which brings me to the reason that I love Raid Shadow Legends. Your champions are in Endlessly customizable. Not only can you enhance your champion stats with artifact sets like the lifesteal and critical hit rate ones that I've got on Steel Bowyer, but you can also upgrade each individual artifact to unlock new bonus substats like extra accuracy, HP, attack, or defense. There's something new going on in Raid every single day. The big update coming this month is the Guardian Ring. With Guardian Ring, you'll be able to get legendary champions you missed out on and use your champions in new ways to upgrade your existing favorites. Oh, and one final pro tip, make sure to click the link in the description of my video or scan the QR code. All new players downloading Raid are going to get an epic champion named Trinuru added to their team who's amazing in the Doom Tower. Plus, you'll also get 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get into the game. And make sure to get an ASAP because you can only claim all your special rewards for the next 30 days. And once you're in, you can find me under the name Bussy Queen. Thanks so much to Raid for sponsoring today's video. Now, light speed ahead. First up, RuPaul. <laughs> Girl, what the hell was she wearing on the main stage tonight? What was that? What was that? She's giving me half gladiator, half space age princess, and full time rat. Next up, Vanity Milan she is. In the main challenge, she is cast as the role as Baby Yolo, a pun on Baby Yoda, which interestingly is a character that she wanted. And I've gotta ask, what is up with the just ahead roles on Drag Race? I think this goes back as early as Vivacious and Darianne in that like horror acting challenge they did. And we've more recently seen Nikki Doll in a baby head role in season 12. Like I'm not sure if Drag Race is just being self-referential at this point, or if there's like a bigger reference that I'm missing, but if anyone knows, let me know down in the comments below. Anywho, I think Vanity did pretty good, especially for a role that was just ahead and relied on flatulence and burping for comedic effects. Like she literally defeated the villain in the plot, Ella, with her farts from drinking too much baby space nut milk, or is it space milk baby nut? Kitty? My only critique is I think she could have leaned into that Yoda voice a tad more. A baby drag queen I am. You know, something like that. Because at times it sounded more like she was just kind of doing a 30 man voice than Yoda. Anyways, hot this performance was. And on the runway, she is bringing us a look inspired by the movie Baps, starring Halle Berry. Now, there is a lot of good here, I have to say. She looks really pretty. And yes, orange is her color, to a fault. <laughs> I literally don't know how she managed to find so many orange cocktail dresses in the UK, but girl, you better believe she bought every one of them and brought every single one of them to the runway. Anyway, the orange I can deal with, but the silhouette on this, I really was wanting something a little bit different. Especially because the original silhouette of this outfit was like a full jumpsuit thing. Like she went out of her way here to turn a jumpsuit into a cocktail dress. And in addition to this look lacking a little bit of element of surprise, I have to say I was slightly confused by the way she accessorized it. I'm not sure where the fanny pack came from or why she's wearing that big giant necklace. It feels a little distracting instead of additive. What is it that Coco Chanel said? Take one thing off before you leave the house? For me, it's my panties. I'm gonna leave this outfit at a warming orange. I mean, like RuPaul said herself, <laughs> I'm a little surprised that Vanity is still in the competition. But then again, this season is just kind of using snatch game rules where nothing matters and the winner is, who cares? She's had one win across the season in the girl group challenge and been in the bottom three times. But it's also not unusual to have somebody who's been in the bottom three times make it to the final four or three. After all, lip syncing is a key part of many drag queens performances. So I think it really is a testament to how strong of a competitor she actually is that she's managed to survive three of them. And in the third 
Galaxy for me tonight is Ella Viday. She opens this episode in the confessionals telling us that she is an amazing actor. It's what she does for a living, she says. And she's kind of getting this edit that we typically see of the cocky queens overhyping their skills and then they end up in the bottom. But the reverse happened. Ella turns out actually is an amazing actor. And that didn't actually surprise me because we saw how amazing of a performance that she gave in Snatch Game. And I would say those two types of performances are pretty analogous. She played Daft Shader, a name pun on Darth Vader. And the appearance of her character was kind of a mix between Miss Vader and the berries and cream guy and like Lord Farquaad from Shrek. <laughs> I thought she did a great job. I really have no complaints about her performance at all, but I was a little confused at why the judges were praising the like sound effect. It sounded like they added to her rubbing the leather on her outfit, or maybe the material of her look really was that loud, girl. I don't know. Turns out Ella is an L of an actor. This performance was hot. And on the runway, she takes us on a little trip to the candy shop. She's serving us orange. Oompa Loompa. I thought this was super fun and doing something like this is really brave because it's getting really close to like ugly territory or costumey territory, but I think she really managed to keep this her own. Oompa Loompa doopity doo. This look was hot. And Ella officially ends this episode as not only a scene stealer, but a competition stealer. She's got three wins now, but interestingly, two of them are shared. This one with Kitty and the other being from the girl group challenge, which is actually quite impressive that she has won such a variety of challenges. I think she maybe is one of the most versatile queens that we've ever seen on Drag Race and also surprising. She talked earlier in the season about being underestimated by people and I think often that can be a good thing. Really allows you to sneak up from behind. Ow. And considering how funny she was in Snatch Game, I'm also expect her to do well in the roast challenge next week. Guess we'll see. Next up, Crystal Versace. In the challenge, she is cast as she 3 po She was the only queen tonight that I think didn't actually want her role from the outset, despite the role appearing to have been written exclusively for her. She's the, quote, robotic model of the plot, and she is the sort of straight man archetype to Kitty's comedic character. She did look visibly uncomfortable while rehearsing during this challenge, but I have to say, I think she pulled this role off really well, which combined with her runway, which we'll get to here in just a second, is why she's in second for me tonight. It really felt like she was stepping outside of her box being loud and super present in the challenge, which is really what they were being asked to do in an acting challenge. And for someone who normally is a little bit shy and quiet, at least in the workroom, this showed a new side that I enjoyed. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Crystal, this performance was shiny hot. And on the runway, how many Dalmatians had to die for this look? She's giving us a recreation of one of Glenn Close's looks from the 101 Dalmatians movie. And this is perhaps my favorite runway she's done. Maybe my favorite across all the queens from this season. It is drop dead gorgeous. A beautiful, not only recreation, but homage to the original. But I also just love an iconic evil villain Glamazon, so maybe I'm just a tad biased. I genuinely recoiled when the judges were sitting there like, we expected this. We expected you to look beautiful. And I was like, y'all expected her to look great? Sure. But like a perfect drag recreation of this look? How can you expect that? What, what are you talking about? And this is something that they kind of keep saying. It almost feels a little bit like they're trying to belittle or humble her. Because at this point, I'm not sure what Crystal could do on the runway to get a little more recognition besides turn water into wine and walk on water. Dress like an Oompa Loompa, perhaps? This look gets 101 from me. I thought Crystal got a really interesting edit this episode because I feel like we were trying to be sold this narrative that Crystal hasn't been very good at pretty much anything besides runways. And I think that's just not true. Like, sure, she flopped in Snatch Game, at least from what we saw, but I thought she was pretty good in Drag Lexa the episode prior, and she did win the performance-based Dragaton Challenge. It's been really interesting, I think, to watch Crystal progress through this season. She started off so strong, two wins off the bat. And and then has since been chilling in the safe zone. Her track record is not totally dissimilar to Lawrence's from last season who started off really strong and then went a little bit downhill in the second half. And finally in my number one position tonight, Kitty Scott, another badge. So Kitty actually got to cast everyone and in a confessional we hear her say that she's giving roles to people that they don't want or that she thinks they're not gonna do good in, which was a little bit of an evil side that I don't think we've seen from Kitty before. Turns out this Kitty do 
I've got claws. She takes the lead, of course, as Brabarella, a pun on Barbarella, and I guess is now officially the second character in the Drag Race franchise to be parodying this name. Delta Work being the first as Boobarella. And side note, if it's been a while since you've seen season three drag queens from outer space from Earth to Uranus, it's time for you to go rewatch it. <laughs> we are on the lookout for single guys. Anywho, Kitty is in my number one spot tonight because of the way she stole the show. I think she is in a league of her own in acting, truly. It was almost like watching the teacher of the class act amongst their students in a school play. She was literally just dancing comedic circles around everyone. A star is born. Kitty's performance was hot. And on the runway, I thought the old lady dropped it in the ocean. Her look is a recreation of one that Kate Winslet wore in the role of Rose from the Titanic. And not to say the movie isn't excellent because I did enjoy it when I watched it, but I can't say that I really remember the outfits from it. In fact, the only look that I can really think of when I think of this movie is Rose when she's like going, draw me like one of your French girls, Jack. Which now that I thought of that would have been an even more fun look to try to recreate for a runway. That said, I looked it up and this look is a great recreation of the one that Kate wore in the movie. This whole look is really perfected to a T. The hat, the suit, the hair. And I love the attention to detail here. For example, the way that she recreated the pinstripe in Rhinestones. And as Michelle pointed out, that reveal was ridiculously stupid, but literally that's drag. And I loved her for that. Kitty, I'll never let go. This look is hot. It's been really fun to see Kitty blossom, although I do think that her star was shining from the very beginning of this season. I just think the judges weren't looking for it. Her runways have been super strong and consistent, if not getting better and better each week. And she's been quite the standout in most of the challenges. It's crazy, actually, in retrospect, that she only won now this episode and last week's, of course, being the Fugly Pageant. Every other episode, she was safe. Overall, I have to say I actually really enjoyed this episode. It was maybe one of the better, if not the best, of the entire season, maybe right behind the premiere. The challenge felt rehearsed, thought out, and was a lot of fun. And it really felt this episode like the editing and Michelle's directing was really focused on trying to help the queens out and give them all the best shot at winning. Could they have sent somebody home? Maybe, but they only had four queens left and were on episode eight because of all the craziness this season. So what were they gonna do? Go down to a bottom three this episode or worse, like bring somebody back from one of the earlier ones? I don't think so. But who will win this season? Despite all of this season's nonsensical decisions, crazy ups and downs, we actually have a pretty close top three. Crystal and Kitty's track record is now identical and Ella is only slightly ahead of both of them. Vanity though is pretty far behind all three because of her three bottom placements. I think next week's challenge is going to be pretty telling. It seems like they were giving some harsh critiques, at least in the preview that we saw, so I am at least expecting an elimination. Which brings me to the outcome of this episode. There is no bottom two. Everyone is at least safe, and Ella and Kitty lip sync for the win. Kind of a good little tie-in, I guess, to the very first episode where Victoria, RIP, and Crystal lip synced for their win. And I did react to this lip sync over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash buzzyqueen. That's my members only website where my Patreon family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and access to exclusive videos. You can click on the link in the description of my video to join right now. See you there. But my genuine honest thoughts are that Kitty won the lip sync cut and dry. And I was fine with Ella and Kitty sharing a win, but I really wouldn't have minded if they had just given it to Kitty. Maybe they were scared though that she was going to win next episode's roast challenge, considering she's so funny and didn't want to give her three wins in a row at the very end. Just a thought. And finally, as for my hottest hots this episode, my hottest hot on the runway goes to Crystal Versace. And in the challenge, it goes to Kitty. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hots and they respectively voted for Crystal Versace and Elle of a Day. As always, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. Today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. And my patrons for making my channel possible. And I wanna give a special shout out to Alouetta, Kara Charco, and Chris Thomas, who've all just ruined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Lissy BC and Zane, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hottest hot tier. And Lark, Angel, Cyrus, Alicia, Cody P, Jared Rox, JB Joseph, Josh Marchant, JP in Dallas, Laura, Matthew, Maxi Low, wow, Miss F, Neely, OG Debuse, Rochambeau, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Topher, Triton, and Neely, who are all sporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.